Well, I'm noon and I grew up uh, in the Seattle area um, with my mom and my father until I was two. My mom was kind of a neglectful parent. We were kind of on my mom's journey with her. She was into the new age movement. When I was in middle school, I had kind of a mental breakdown. I didn't know what was happening to me, but I started to hear voices in my head. And that was kind of the beginning of my anxiety and depression. And my mom put me in psych wards then. So. And in there, they just piled on the medication. So I kind of learned if there's something wrong, you need to, if there's something wrong with me, I have to take a pill. When I was 14, I tried meth for the first time. And so I dropped out of high school um, and started going to raves a lot and doing ecstasy. I got a call from my mom saying that I needed to come home. And I was in Astoria at the time. And I was like, I'm not. I can't just come home, like, it's not like that. And she said that they couldn't find my sister. I got a ride back up and found out that um, my sister had been involved in a mass shooting um, in 2006 called the Capitol Hill Massacre. And it was after a rave. They had got, she had gone to a party. She was 15 at the time and I was 17. Um, my sister was murdered. And that's where my life just completely, it changed at that point. Instead of using drugs to have fun, I used it to cope. When I was 18, I tried heroin for the first time and that's did exactly what I wanted it to do. It took everything away, all the feelings. I ended up homeless and um, using sex to get what I needed, my drugs. I felt justified in it. Like what I was doing was because I was a victim and my, you know, what, you know what happened to me was my sister was killed. So it's okay that I do this. My mom decided she would let me come back and stay with her for the first time in almost 10 years. There was that one last time where I was like, okay, I'm gonna, use because I am so hopeless and I'm going to use too much because I just want to go to bed and not wake up again. So I did that and I, when I came to, I guess that it had been a while and I was surrounded by paramedics. My mom said what had happened is I had stumbled into her room and fell to the floor and quit breathing. They were able to bring me back after a defibrillation, Narcan, defibrillation, Narcan, so twice on both. After I kind of got a little clarity, there was like a crack in that hopelessness that I, I didn't know. I felt so different. Like there was a difference from the person that went down to the person that came up. And I'm kind of looking back later, like that was, and this was 2016, that was like God was giving me a chance because within a month I ended up in a treatment center in Yakima and decided to read a Bible and then this lady was like, well, why don't you try praying? And I'm like, like, are you insane? <laughs> and I did. I tried praying and it had that tangible peace again. And then I ended up at the Union Gospel Mission there and there I gave my life to Jesus and the Lord held me. He kept me alive and I got home and ended up at Teen Challenge. I know the Lord is has brought me to this place to really work out everything. God can reach us in so many different ways. You know, by God's grace, I'll be able to um, keep spreading His this testimony and keep um, shining a light for Him, just loving people where they're at.